Hi guys, Mr. Johnny here. Just decided to show a little bit of what I'm doing at the moment. And what I'm doing at the moment, you saw in my previous videos that I made this device, assemble this kit. And right now I'm powering it from my big lab bench power supply under the actual bench, under bench power supply. So, yeah, that's kind of inconvenient. I want to uh, make it so it will be powered directly off of the mains and for that I need to uh, build in um, into the existing enclosure a switch more power supplies which should be capable of delivering 3 amps at 24 volts because that's a rated power for the cartridge 72 volts So I went through and decided uh, from different topologies what topology to use. Flyback, I don't have a core that will suit this application, so forward converter, a single switch forward converter, I don't have a MOSFET that will handle the that voltage stress, uh, that, uh, that topology, namely single switch forward converter puts on it, I don't think it you need an 800 volt MOSFET there as a bare minimum, which is just too much. As for a two switch forward converter, it is just on par with, or with on the difficulty level with the half bridge. So I decided to do a half bridge. You can see the power transformer here. This is actually made from two toroids. Just like. Two of these toroids stacked together on each other. Another transformer you see there is a gate drive transformer. Gate drive transformer, which is again made on two of these green cores stacked together. Why did I stack them together? Well, for the cross section reasons. For the desired power, I need a uh, desire I need a certain cross section if I have a too little of a cross section I need just a too large number of turns which want which I won't be able to put on the actual core very easily and uh, that will just create problems uh, so I did stack in here and there here is a primary is 51 turns secondary right now is just for a test is 5 turns for this 12 volt bulb uh, the intended secondary will be 22 turns center tapped because um, there will be a rectifier, common cathode, Schottky diode, and then a choke, then a capacitor that will be a 24 volt output. Then there will be a divider going to the TL494, which is the brains of the circuit. The frequency of operation is 40 kilohertz. I on purpose picked it reasonably low, so hopefully I won't run into extreme trouble laying out a board for it because the flyback I dis uh, designed previously runs at 100 kilohertz and uh, that is quite pesky. I do have a very very weird ass um, EMI problem there just uh, everything on the primary side actually looks fine but whenever just I do have extreme ripple which is on the secondary side that the ripple current through the um, capacitors is actually large enough to cause a significant uh, um, voltage drop on the actual track going to those capacitors that I can pick a voltage drop across the track with my scope by this low inductance pickup so just like that you can see the um, distance between the tip and the ground lead now is very small and the distance of the track is uh, sufficient enough to cause about 10 millivolts peak to peak of voltage um, or actually more 20 millivolts of peak to peak uh, voltage drop across this uh, length of the track so it's quite severe 
But what I want to show you right now is just how well they are, the way from on the gates look looks uh, because right now I do have a very minimalistic uh, circuit on the cylinder of the GDT. It's just a resistor in the gate and that's that. Uh, normally you should put there a little shaping circuit which is supposed to make the waveform look much nicer but you can see the scope is gate to source there. Gonna bring you closer, remove the magnet so it the phone does not go into sleep. And power. And that's how the waveform on the gate looks like. It looks fantastic if you ask me. There is very little overshoot there. There is pretty much no overshoot there. The little step you see there and there is what the dead time is. And the dead time when both of the switches are off to prevent cross conduction. If I'm gonna zoom out, just you can see that it looks very nice. Absolutely no ringing on it, which is a tremendous result if you take into account how sloppy it is constructed. What is that? I mean, like, the control is on the breadboard. The just length of the wi wires leading to GDT and from it is just rubbish, but... Okay, so here we have the power connected. We have a gate drive there. I'm gonna just go and apply mains to this lead which is goes to the bridge rectifier honey microfarad capacitor a light bulb from the capacitor between the capacitor and the actual half bridge that helps put in the light bulb here after the capacitor helps a lot in the event when uh, it works fine then it decides to go short and when it does that if you don't ha if you have a light bulb on the AC side, the capacitor will discharge into the MOSFET and will likely kill it. This time it just cannot do that because it has a light bulb in series from it. So even when this just turns on very hard, the discharge from this capacitor cannot reach high enough amplitude to kill it. Uh, what can happen now is uh, because 100 microfarads on the second or the output of the bridge, the bridge stresses a lot because when I plug it in, depends on where I plug it in. If I happen to plug it in right when the voltage is, in, is on the peak, uh, the bridge will see a surge of current which may kill it, but it's a 4 amp bridge. For a continuous current, I hope it will be fine. Okay, we have a gate drive there on the scope. Let's plug it in and see. And we have the light bulb glowing just fine. The gate drive does not change a bit. There is no ex additional ringing. Well, it actually does change a bit. If you pay close attention to those steps I showed you previously, you will see that they change just the slightest bit. But that's nothing terrific, so that's what I'm dealing with right now. I'm making a little half bridge power supply to be embedded into the enclosure of the soldering station to make it very nice indeed. So that's that. I obviously won't show the schematic now because I will have to work out some bugs, make it excellent, put some more or less proper shape in the gates, even though this one works fine. Uh, seeing that uh, the resistors work fine there, I will just go and use a very minimalistic shape in circuit. Just a little bit more than this, but not very advanced one because I see that the GDT works extremely well. The leakage inductance on it is just uh, very minimal. It's uh, less than 1% of, of um, 
the leakage inductance is the uh, inductance that the prime when you measure the primary and when you shot the secondary and the primary with all the other windings open circuit is one milli henry and when i short uh, the one of the secondaries it goes to uh, less than one micro henry so that's less than one percent which is a good result which is why i have this clean of a waveform so that's that i don't know how much longer will it take me uh, it will take me to finish off this project but i hope soon because i really do want to in to be able to use this station more often without having to hook up the lab power supply to it all right so that's that have any questions post uh, leave them in the comments below i'll try to answer them if i can if i have time or have the knowledge to do it if i do not uh, if i do not answer that just means that uh, i just don't have time for it and please if you make a question try to write it in a clear way so i will be able to understand it straight away without first spending time uh, uh, decoding whatever your question is thanks for watching see you